Good evening and salutations, my Days of Allies fans. <sighs> Gwen. Gwen, or as I like to call her, the mean spirited bitch. Here's the thing about this character. I understand that you need in these dramas, soap operas, whatever. You need a good villain. You need somebody to sit there and shake stuff up, status quo, all that good stuff. I am fine with a good villain. As long as I can understand the reasons and the motivations behind said person. We are, what, three months in, give or take? We have no idea why this woman is doing what she's doing. And I feel like the longer... The longer we go on, and I can only speak for myself, but the longer this goes on without knowing why she's doing what she's doing, the less I'm starting to care. Um, and I feel like there's this big payoff. I, I feel like for some people, it's going to start to not matter as much. I mean, yeah, we'll know, but it'll just be like, okay, cool, and she's still a terrible person. Um, I don't know if the reason is, I don't know if whatever reason why she's doing it will matter as far as the payoff. Because we all want to know why she's doing what she's doing. I, mm. So, the little snake that she is, because at this point, I, I just, I, I really do not care about this character, to be honest. Um, the snake that she is, is seen, you know, using a plastic baseball bat to start knocking stuff around, start hitting stuff, and pretty much have a temper tantrum like a 12-year-old child. And Jennifer sees this, and at first she's like, what's going on? I'm glad the kids aren't here. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Gwen being Gwen... Starts to make up some BS story about how she's upset with Jake and, um, you know, Jack and Abigail. How she's all upset for Abigail. She rides and dies for Abigail and yada, 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 yada. We get to a point where, you know, now she wants to fuel Jennifer's resentment towards Jack. And, you know... I, I still want to call her the POS that she is. But it's up to Jennifer on how upset she wants to continue to be at Jack. So she's all like, oh, well, you know, I was all upset. And then she's like, oh, well, these men and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, I, I, I don't know how much more I could sit there and take of this woman. Um, And I almost don't want to even call her a woman at this point. But she, she, she gets in Jennifer's head and she's all like, oh, why don't you take the baseball bat and start, start knocking it around to, you know, to get out your anger and stuff. And while she's doing that, because she allowed Gwen to get in her head for some odd goddamn reason, she's knocking, you know, just hitting stuff or whatever. And, you know, Gwen is not there in the background just smirking and everything. And I'm like, you are... A giant fucking headache. You are, like, I I'm literally just, like, fuming at this point. Because I'm like, wow, you are a piece of garbage. Like, out of all the villains that I've ever seen in watching TV and soap operas and stuff, I care so little about this woman. I care so little about her, her reasoning why. Because she is... You know, destroying this woman's marriage. Well, she's fueling to destroy this woman's marriage. Um, you know, she, she's doing every, everything that she can to destroy Abigail's life. Which, by the way, is still, like, still has her own mental issues or whatever. But she's acting like she's getting some sort of giant trophy for, like, you know, she constantly pats herself on the back. And I'm like... You know, it's amazing. You're a disgusting snake and you're patting yourself on the back for getting one over 
on this woman. Like, like that's something to be proud of, you know? That you gotta sit there and befriend someone, take advantage of their kind nature, then point and laugh in their face like you did something great, like you're just this goddess of destruction. I'm like... Mm, um, I, I can keep going, but the point is... Clearly I'm pissed off about that. Um, but with that being said, it works. And then um, Jennifer goes, you know, she's at uh, Julie's place. She's at Julie's place. And she's, she's on a computer, whatever, and Jack comes and sees her. And she gives Jack the most disgusting, angry stare I've ever seen. Like, like if Jack was to just suddenly keel over. She had that look like she would just step over his body and continue to, like, go on about her merry way. And Jack, and Jack is not trying to talk to her. Like, he, he makes a joke, and granted, it was probably a poor joke or whatever, but she took it like, I don't know, Jack kicked over some kittens or whatever. And so, um... Yeah, so she's not there giving Jack pretty much a stink eye or whatever. And, you know, Jack says something that probably he shouldn't have said as far as, like, taking some more young men back to her place or whatever. But, you know, he was like, listen, you know, we got to sit there and talk about it. You know, you got to give me a chance at least to try to talk to work this out, you know. And she just, she decides to not even look at him while he's talking. Now, here's my thing. I get that she's angry. I get that she is hurt. I can respect that. I can get behind that. What I can't get behind is the level of disrespect that she has for him. Like, this is one of those things where it's like you can't even bother to sit there and look at someone when they're talking to you, when they're trying to be some, you know, when they're trying to be apologetic and own up to their mistakes and understand that they, they hurt them and, and feel guilty and bad for it. And, you know, towards the end, Jack was like, you know, I, I, I'll never give up on you. And I was like, um, maybe you should. Like, maybe you should. I, I don't know. I do not have the level of patience that clearly Jack and, um, Eli have for some of these women. Um, because I know if I was in that role and they couldn't even be bothered to look at me, I might have been like, you know what? I'm done. I mean, this is probably after I would have, like, told them off. But, yeah, I, I'm like, you are, and, and granted, I know this had a lot to do with the fact that Gwen, the snake that she is, got in her head. But, like, you're a grown-ass woman. You make your own choices. You know, I, I felt like that was, that was unnecessary. It was uncalled for, and it was probably a little bit over the line, you know? And as he walked off, that's when she decided to turn and, and look at him. I'm like, wow. Um, wow. And, and again, I can go on and on and on. But to sit there and say that I was not pleased with Jennifer is a an understatement. Um, okay, let's, <laughs> let's get to the other, um, the other guy. My goodness, there were some people that really irritated me today. Let's start with this. Let's talk with let's, let's start with Chad. So Chad just straights up like, you have an affair with me with Jake? Dude, what the hell is wrong with you? Oh, I found this scarf and I found you sitting there laying on his lap and, you know, you invited him to Thanksgiving and yada yada yada. And when Abigail's like, yeah, I invited him to Thanksgiving because I wanted y'all to be closer. For the boys. Why the hell would I actually sit there and invite my lover to Thanksgiving? And you know, Chad was like, oh, that's not funny. I was like, dude, you're, you are in no position to sit there and tell her anything at this point. But go. Go right ahead. Let's, let's, let's hear you um, dig yourself into a, a bigger hole. Um, so they argue, and she's like, you know, it gets to a point, it gets to a boiling point when Jack comes in there, and, um, Abigail goes upstairs, and she goes somewhere, and Jack and, and, 
and Chad are talking and you know this is when Chad is like oh wow I'm an ass you get 10 points for that I didn't out of a hundred you get 10 good start um they go back and forth and you know it's weird because instead of Jack being like why the hell would you sit there and accuse my daughter of sitting there cheating on you with some other guy? Instead of him actually being somewhat, like, protective or, like, really kind of, like, standing up for her. Or being somewhat upset about it. He's just like, I'm sure that, you know, she'll understand and, you know, she'll forgive you and stuff like that. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's, that's really, that's. That's really what you have for him? Okay, sure, whatever. Um, and then Abigail walks back in the room and, you know, Chad asks, you know, will you forgive me? And Abigail's like, yeah, I will in time. I just need my space or whatever. So she walks off and Chad just, you know, just stands in the living room and looks like an ass because he deserves it. Now, I I I'm going to be honest with you. And I've said this yesterday. But Chad is not exactly my favorite character at all. And I don't think, here's the thing, I don't think he's a terrible character. I don't think he's a terrible character. I've seen some characters just like, wow, I can't even, the sound of your voice is irritating the hell out of me. I don't think he's a terrible character, but I do think that he is snobbish. I, I think that he acts arrogant at times and not in an arrogant way where it's like, you ever had a character that's, that could be a little bit arrogant, but you still sort of root for him. Like, you still sort of like him, even though you're just like, Dude, you're an ass, but I rock with you. He's not that character. And so, him coming in, of course, is arrogant and snobbish at times. It just, like... Ugh, I, I... I don't really know about that character. I don't. And I've tried. When I first started watching this show, I've tried. But he... No. Um, now, we'll get to the other part. Um, Nicole. You know, here's the thing. From what I've read a little bit online, from stuff that people have told me, Nicole isn't exactly in a position to sit there and start looking down upon other people. So she sees Trip, and she just comes out, and she's, like, being all bitchy, and it's all like, oh, so you're not going to say hi to your son? And, like, I expect that from you. And you're a rapist, this, that, and the third. I'm like, Nicole, I've heard you have some real bad skeletons in your closet. You, you really think you're in a position to start spitting venom at someone? Now, granted, I will sit there and to kind of, you know, play devil's advocate to some extent. Let's just sit there and say, for the sake of argument, the trip did do it. Well, then as bad as Nicole is, um, Trip would be a thousand times worse. But we all know that Trip, 99% didn't do this. So Nicole is sitting there berating him, but then, you know, Ava comes up and she's all like, Oh, well, me and Ava used to be friends, I don't like her, and yada, 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 and I've done bad stuff. Cool, why don't you, uh... I mean, I only know parts of some of the stuff that you did that was bad. Why don't you share, why don't you share with the class and the rest of the stuff? You know, for the newcomers. Um, anyway, she should raise him and she just, you know. Oh, oh, whoa, I know I forgot about something. So Trip was like, so you cool with her just coming at me with a gun? You know, you're, you're okay with that? And I'm just like, the moral compass on this woman is incredible. And, you know, when Sammy left, and we all know how much I do not like Sammy, I pretty much call her the Karen of soap operas. But when Sammy left, Sammy felt that, well, you know what, listen, I don't like you, Nicole, but you've been good to my daughter, and I feel like you could be a good watchful eye, a good, a good um, role model, and everything like that. And your moral compass is, oh, well, you know, it, like him, you know, what does she sit there and say? She says something along the lines of, 
yeah, well, he only, you know, she only tried to point a gun at you, you know. It was a lot worse than what you did to her. And I'm like, I'm not excusing one thing for the other. And I do get that in her eyes by science that he did something a lot worse. But don't sit there and try to act like what she did was totally innocent. And hell, the only reason why she doesn't have a bullet in her chest or her head is because of Trip. You should be thanking him. You should be thanking him. <sighs> wow. I, I, and you know, we'll, we'll get to Rafe in a minute. Actually, we'll get to Rafe now because to actually tell you the truth, that was pretty much about it. So, Rafe is talking to Ali. Rafe is not there talking to Ali. And, you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, how happy she is being back and stuff like that. And she, you know, she lets them know about the whole, well, pretty much they talk about a little bit about the um, trip situation, the Ava situation. And, you know, Ali's like, so are you here to arrest me? And, you know, she has that, that dumb look on her face. And I, I don't think I'm ever going to really get over that because... And, and granted, the actress plays the to a T, plays the dumb, naive, what did I do wrong, I'm so innocent look. And of course, you know, Rafe was like, you know, I'm not going to rest your relief right now, but, you know, you got to stay away from him. I felt like Rafe gave, um, I felt like Rafe gave Allie, I, <laughs> You know what? I was gonna sit there and say, I, I was gonna sit there and try to give him credit by sitting there saying he gave Ali the most sternest talk about staying away from Trip, not using a gun, don't do that. But you know what? To be honest, I felt like he really didn't give her the stern lecture that I expected. You know, like yeah, it was it was more tougher than everyone else. How even eight, you know, I have to tell you the truth, I'm not going to lie, I'm so disappointed. Just in general, I'm so disappointed with the fact that no one actually gave her a stern talking like, why the hell would you do that? Are you out of your mind? Like, I can sit there and arrest you at this point. That's what I would, I have to tell you the truth, if you would have did, I would have been, I would have been clapping, I would have been so happy, but nope, nope, we're just going to sit there and say, oh, well, you know, she's poor Allie, so whatever. Um, and that's literally what he did. Like, I felt like he, you know what, I can keep going about that, but point is, I'm just, I'm disappointed in that. Um, so, we're going to get to the other scene, because Rafe does actually, after he talks to Nicole, and Nicole's all like, oh, well, you know, you're not going to sit there and arrest her because, you know, she wasn't in the right mind and yada, yada, yada. I was like, yes, okay, great. That's great sub-parenting. That's amazing. I am... I... Mm. You know, let me just get to the other part because I'm, I am I feel like if I, if I think about that for too long about how she just pretty much just gave her an excuse like, you know, her going... Over Tripp's house with a gun was just not that bad of an idea. So, okay, we get to. Well. So, how do I start this off? Okay, so Kayla gets home. Kayla gets home and Steve is there. And um, at some point they talk a little bit. And then Ava comes out the bedroom and one of Steve's shirts. Because. I don't know, to make. Kayla pissy, <laughs> which works by the way. Um, so she's all surprised. She's like, "What is she doing? How is she alive? What's going on?" And then she proceeds to choke the life out of Ava. And I'm like, "Okay, um, wow, I didn't see that. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't see that coming. I really didn't see that coming because Kayla seems so reserved." She seems so reserved that I'm just like, that's so not like you, but okay. So they talk a little bit, and Kayla's pissed. She's upset where she didn't get a heads up. She wants to call the cops, this, that, and the third. And she's also upset about Joey being in prison when she's still alive. 
It was like, so here's the thing. Because I'm alive, there's a whole new set of charges that I can just come up with, you know? And so she's like, listen, here's the thing. If you want Joey out of prison, you got to sit there and drop the charges. You got to sit there and let me go free. That's the deal. She's pissed. She's angry about it. And, you know, she's also, <laughs> in the beginning, she was also upset when she found out that Trip, that, um, you know, Trip was still staying there. And that, um, Steve didn't say anything. But that was the least of her worries. So at some point, Rafe comes over and he sees Ava. And, you know, he starts to turn her over to, you know, arrest her. And he was like, uh, Kayla, don't, don't, don't you got something to say? Hey, hey, she's she, she got something to say. And that's pretty much where it leads off. Um, this episode. <laughs> mm, this episode kind of annoyed me in so many ways. Um, but Ava is really great. In these scenes, Kayla. I, I I don't know about Kayla sometimes. I I really, I don't know if it's Kayla. I don't know if it's her character. It's her acting. There's times where it just comes across as very wooden, um, wooden. And so, I, I just, I didn't really know how to feel about Kayla in these scenes, but, um. And of course, Trip comes back in, and he's trying to be kind of somewhat peacekeeper. So the whole thing is actually pretty interesting. Um, I actually tell you if I found that the most to be the most interesting part of this episode, because <laughs> clearly the other stuff really annoyed me. And with that being said, I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry, I just came out so late, but I was at the dentist's office, and um. Well, I wasn't actually in a lot of pain, so that was good. Actually, tell you if I wasn't really in any pain, so that was actually pretty great. Um, but yes, with that being said, let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe. Catch you in the next video.